The bottled water industry, popular and portable, bottled water has often been criticised and attacked for its environmental performance. But if you're in the industry, then you'll know that bottled water is the healthiest packaged beverage, responsibly produced and a positive contributor to the economy. So how have the critics gained the wrong impression about bottled water? Is it time to have a common way to talk about all the positive aspects of the industry? Richard Hall certainly thinks so. Richard is chairman of Zenith International, a consultancy based in the UNESCO World Heritage City of Bath in the UK. He recently published his thoughts on how the packaged water industry could follow a global protocol. I asked Richard to explain more. Richard, in the latest issue of Water Innovation, you propose what you describe as a global protocol for bottled water. Why now? Well, because brands are very good at promoting what they do as companies. But this is a much bigger industry issue. The public have um, a much bigger market that they're buying bottled water throughout the world and there are issues about health and the environment which need to be addressed. You mentioned health and the environment there. You focused on three key areas, the first being public health, then environmental impact and lastly social contribution. How did you identify those three areas and is one of them in fact more important than the other two? Well, they're all desperately important. I guess that there's been more media attention to health and the environment, but all three are very strong areas for the industry to put its case on uh, the social side. Um, actually, bottled water companies are often the largest local employers in quite far distant rural areas. Uh, on health, hydration can do so much for good for public health. And on the environment, I think when people stop and think about the bottled water industry, its environmental impact is much better than the media would have us believe. You talked about some of the companies there. You've been involved with the bottled water industry for 20 years with Zenith, for over 10 years now with Foodbev Media. So you know many of the leading personalities very well. Do you think that the larger companies particularly are going to be able to um, dissociate themselves from the day-to-day -day commercial issues and look at the bigger picture to engage with a protocol like this? Well, you're right, this is a bigger picture, but it's also a commercial issue. How do, I mean, any one company can't answer the whole environmental debate or the whole health of the world in, 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 in one company budget. But if all of the industry put their resources together, they can make more of a contribution to really an important debate for society. So what would you hope would be the next step for the global, the global protocol? Would you want companies to become involved directly? Do you simply want a, a conversation to begin between them? Or do you see a personal role in this for the future? Well, I've put up some ideas based on thoughts from some of the leading companies. I hope that the next stage is that some of the industry associations around the world will pick up the debate, have a look at the protocol, see what's good about it, see what can be improved, and then maybe one of those associations will pick it up and say, yes, we'd like to adopt something like that. And then I hope that companies will sign up. And this is really for smaller companies as well as bigger ones because a lot of it's about communication and common messaging. Um, looking specifically at the, at the five points in three sections and beginning with hydration, it's a pretty obvious starting point because all water hydrates. But what is the key issue? Is it around consumer understanding of the messaging? Are the brands failing to get across the essential health benefits of water? Well, I think, first of all, we all take water for granted, so we don't stop and think about it very much. But if you look at hydration... Uh, what should the message be? Lots of companies have different messages. So the European Food Safety Authority now has a very good sort of benchmark study. And if the whole industry around the world got behind that and got some common messaging, then if everybody is saying the same thing, it makes it much easier for the media and the public to understand that. So that's part of the start of it. But it's also about putting some budgets behind the communication as well as the common messaging. And if you put all that together, the other thing I think is very important is that governments have nutrition policies, but they don't have hydration policies. If hydration was part of that nutrition debate and all the governments had hydration guidelines too, then that would work I think very well for like five fruit and veg a day, then eight glasses a day or one more glass a day, something like that would I think be a very simple sensible message for companies and the industry to unite behind. Okay, so we, we started talking about packaged water, but realising uh, from what you've just said, this is talking about workplace hydration as well. So this is just as relevant to the water cooler industry as it is to small packed bottled yeah, water. And I think that that's part of the other social message. It's all water hydrates. It's not just any one type of water. All water hydrates. If people want a naturally sourced water, that may be beneficial to them in various ways. But it's about hydration. It's, it's about liquid. It's about part of our diet. It's about fighting obesity too. Um, if we all drank one more glass of water a day, we probably would consume 
slightly less calories and less food maybe as well. So we'd, we'd behave better, I think, towards each other. Our skin, our minds, our bodies would work better. So I can't see any, any problem in any of this. It's all good. Um, the next uh, set of, of points is around environmental uh, responsibility. And for the majority of water critics, that's where they begin, about PET, landfill and all of these things. Can you explain your thinking behind the five points under the subject? Um, and if you're a packaged water company, what would be the first thing you would do to put your environmental house in order? Well, the first thing to do is, is the easiest, actually, and that's simply to put 100% recyclable on every single bottle in the world. Because if everyone did that, it would get an important message across to consumers. But more than that, we also have to... Um, I, I think it would be quite a good idea if more companies used more clear PET, because that helps recycling and reusability. I think that if we treat rather warily some of the new materials that are coming through to make sure that um, all materials we use for bottled water are PET compliant, there are some good biomaterials coming through which can go through the recycling stream. We don't want to do anything that will jeopardise recycling. I think for smaller companies, if we can have um, bench marks on light weighting and good practice that will help them so that they can get to best standards like the bigger companies who have their own research capabilities and the one thing that's desperately desperately important is recycling improving the proportion of material that's recycled now I've talked in the protocol about closed loop recycling so that bottles go back to bottles that may not be so important because PET can be used in so many different ways but we really do need to up the figures on recycling and that means more government support and again one company can't do very much about it but if the industry unites links up with other food companies and food sectors, then we can all do it better together. Immediately that takes me to the difference between a small company and a large company. A large company can, if it wishes, allocate a budget for all sorts of things. The last of your three sections is social uh, contribution. Do you really think it's possible for smaller companies to engage in, in these areas, or is this just really the, the, the uh, the territory for, for the big CSR reporting businesses? Oh, absolutely, because I think the lot of owner-managers really um, are personally involved in what they're doing in their local economy and in their local community. And uh, so I think it's, it's just as relevant to them. And a lot of it's about communication and using common messaging. Now, the bigger companies and the associations can contribute to that. And, I mean, it, water stewardship is one of the important social things. But I also think that it's really monstrous that water is taxed, a natural product, with, with, with nothing changed in any way, is taxed as a luxury item in some countries. Uh, I don't think that water should be subjected to value-added tax. Uh, and then there's an awful lot about communication messaging. It's about all water. And I think that actually, again, coming back to smaller companies, the owners of those companies can take a leadership role in their local communities, explaining what they're doing, in creating jobs, in managing the water resource and, and, and the water catchment areas. So I think there's just as much that small companies can do as well as larger companies. Excellent. And for those who perhaps haven't read the article, I'd obviously urge them to do so, but can you sum up the protocol in a sentence as to what you would want people to do and how they, you'd want people to react? Yes, um, very simply. I suppose my motivation is that I would love the food and drink industry to be the best that it can be in a society context. And this protocol is all about trying to make sure that our contribution is as good as it can be. Excellent. Richard, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.